Hi class, I just want to talk to you guys about this next project and sort of planning stages. So I want to show you like, you can't really see it, but these are the type of notebooks that I keep about all kinds of when I'm working on a project. This is me working on a whole show and I have a bunch of different type of small notes in here. And you know, I'm working through different type of small sketches using things talking about what I want to do. So one of the projects that I'm going to be working on is uh, possibly this idea of making this is a small thumbnail sketch I have more of them but this is it of the idea of a ball being caught in a glove okay and so I started off like that I started off with a bunch of notes which would be like brainstorming ideas then tiny little thumbnail sketches then what I did was I went to um, online and I just looked up some pictures basically some really basic I'm going to try to pull it up imagery online to figure out what I wanted to do to think about what I wanted to do where's it at here we go this is not super easy to do but I want you to be able to see my face as well as um, see what I'm doing so okay so should forgive the camera shake. I found some pictures online and I just dropped it into Photoshop real quick to see what kind of lines and things would work for it of a baseball glove. And then what I did was I um, started working on some sketches. So I have a couple different sketches I'm going to show you. So I'm going to pause it for a second and then you can see rough draft sketches that I did. And that what I did was I there it's on a light box right here just so hopefully you can see them a little better. What I did was I started off drawing with um, a light blue pencil. This is called non-photo blue. In case I wanted to scan it and clean it up, you can erase it easily in different computer programs. Um, you can see right here, if you look at it, color ease, non-photo blue. It's not, it's not really um, focusing in very well. And then I'm using pencil to go over it. And then after that, I will use pen to kind of get it locked into place. But anyway, I got some I got some sketches that I was fairly happy with. They're roughs, but they're there. They're getting close to there. I want to show you that I did it from two different angles, the front and the back. I might do the side later as well. But what I want to show you is that what I'm going to do next is take it on my light box. And I'm going to start working through the sketches a little bit and see what I can come up with. So I have the idea down here on the light box. Uh, the the rough draft. And now I'm going to take just a pencil and start to transfer it. I think this is about the scale I want to work. Um, so this is going to be an actual scale for the the final sculpture I'll do out of wire and oil clay. And basically what I'm going to do is just start to rough it out on here and just kind of get some of my basic lines figured out that I already have. But some of the lines I'm not going to like very much, so I'm going to go, okay, I don't like them. So first off, I'm just going to get the basics of it and see what I can do here. And I'm going to use this to do my final because... Um, once I get something sort of close to what I like, I can use it to make my final drawing with the ink over and erase the pencil afterwards. So I'm just kind of going in here carefully, getting rid of some extra stuff, and just getting the basic shape down first. If you don't have a light box, I understand. Um, you can buy them online fairly affordably if you're going to be doing a lot of design work and things like this I recommend maybe it could be useful to have your own what you can do also if you don't have one is to tape your drawing on thin paper up on the window and then put another piece over it um, and then when it's daylight you should be able to use it just like a light box it'll work just as well it's just a little more awkward maybe for uh, drawing standing up and such but it works it works really well 
So I have a lot of extra lines on here and there's kind of a feeling to some of them that they're not exactly accurate. I'm just trying to search for the right line. And that's a good way to sometimes draw some of this type of stuff because you you don't need to worry about it being perfect, especially in a rough draft. You want to kind of do the lines, extra lines, not erase them right away because you're searching for the form that you want to have. And this is just sort of me getting more and more specific as I go along. You notice in this probably right away that um, I'm not trying to be hyper real in my sculpture. So this is how it's starting to develop. It's looking... If you see it there, it's looking a little boring, not enough detail, but this is the basic outline. I'm not trying to be hyper-realistic in this sculpture. That's not the goal for me. I mean, I could get into more and more if I wanted to. Um, that wasn't really the thought, though. I want it to be kind of have a little bit of a nostalgia to it, and um, so that would mean kind of taking down a little bit of the realism, making it feel not cartoony but more simplified so it's a quicker read and focus on the things I want it would be probably really cool if it was hyper realistic as well but that's not really what my goal was for my idea with this whole project is about Americana and people understanding and getting connecting to baseball and a bunch of other types of ideas that I'm working with in a show so I don't necessarily want it to be hyper realistic, but I do need more detail than this to start my my sculpture. So, you know, I'm gonna keep working it through here. I moved my thing off the light box. So there you go, I got that. I'm getting that stuff straightened out there. So I got something happening there that I'm, you know, starting to like. So I'm gonna go through and pick out some of the lines. And then what I did over here, which is useful, is um, I did the back side of it. So I recommend at least doing the front and the back of your sculpture. I could do also, and it would be probably really useful too, would be to do a three-quarter view of it. So kind of from an angle, but, you know, time and everything and working on sculpture slash working at your jobs, trying to get everything going with COVID-19. I don't think necessarily everyone's going to have enough time to do a lot of views. If you do, that would be great. If not, then I understand. But at least give yourself the help of doing two, front and the back. Three quarter would be if I could see both two sides at once instead of just one or the other. So that would be also a really useful way to look at it. And I kind of using adapting some things I found online from different drawings and also just my own looking at my own hands holding holding a uh, holding them my hand in the pose and thinking about it um so that's kind of where that's coming from this is what i mean by rough and then this is going to get to something that's more like a final drawing here after i go along with this and just kind of keep working through if i didn't like some of the details in this I'm working in pencil I can keep changing them and get some erasures going on and add more and take away more um, I'm not going to spend forever on the drawing because I'm working with clay and wire fairly moldable I don't need to maybe spend quite as long if I was working with some type of material that was like metal uh, wood or anything that had more like permanence when you cut it, you know, it's stuck that way so to speak I would spend a lot maybe spend more time measuring and making sure my proportions are accurate on everything and also I would actually Figure out a drawing that was to scale exactly like proportions I have my proportions accurate from a from the standpoint of I was looking at my hand in relationship to arm and the glove size in relationship to the arm, that's all accurate. But I mean, if I was going to be building furniture, for example, or something that was some more similar to that in my um, sculpture practice, I would actually have a plan, like a blueprint, and measure things out and do like something with squares and have everything exactly mapped out to the exact size. But since this is an actual scale drawing, I'm not doing a 
scale drawing where it's smaller me meant to show me how to make something bigger. I'm drawing something that's the actual size I'm going to make it. I'm not as concerned about that type of measuring. What I am concerned about is the proportions of the life. So the scale of the width and height of this glove to the arm feeling accurate and something about the feeling of the way the hand is moving in space feeling accurate. So I can work through all that type of stuff in the sketch ahead of time so I'm not um, trying to wing it at the last minute. But because it's clay and wire I can mess with it a little bit more easily than like stone you know or wood carving things that take are a little more intensive in the sense that if you take material away it's a lot harder to put it back. With clay I'm not quite so concerned. Not to say that I'm not going to spend a decent amount of time doing a good drawing and coming up and shaping my idea. More that I don't have to worry about every measurement being exactly as I want them because it's going to change as I go. Whereas with, you know, something that was way more exacting, then I would be a lot more careful. So I think I've said that like five times. I think you hopefully get the idea of it. So I'm going to keep working on this a little longer and I'll show you what it looks like in just a minute here. So I'm getting further and further along with this thing. And what I'm realizing as I'm going is that the knot work that I have in this thing uh, in the glove is going to have to be consistent. When I go, this is going to be the difficult part is how do I show the knot work, the little details and even the sewing and things like that because I'm looking at pictures and different things and all these small little stitches are going to show. So I'm going to have to think a lot about that and I'm realizing that the pictures of gloves I have and the way I'm holding them isn't feeling exactly the same so I'm gonna have to work through that a little bit more as well as decide on some things like what the basket of the glove I believe that part's called the basket is gonna look like this one had it more solid this one less solid so with gaps in it so I think I'm going more to the gap style but you get the idea here I'm, I don't want to make you watch me for hours and hours but I think you get the idea of what I have going on and then what I will do after that is just for my own sake because I want to be able to work clearly is spend a little time inking it as well so have it that there picking the lines I really like and spending some time inking um, using a fine pen to add details that's where I could come in and add some of the sewing details and things like that if I wanted to and while I'm doing this, I also can refine things even further. Like I realize here while I'm looking, this isn't the right shape. So I can come in and add details. And I'm going to keep working over it. If I needed to, I would even go and do another drawing after this. And really um, work through some things. If I felt like this wasn't convincing enough, I'll just keep doing a couple more drawings. Because... I want the work to, it seems like a lot of work, and yeah, it is a lot of work in a way, but I want this to really be something that's useful to me, and so you think, oh, I just want to get to building it right away. Yeah, that's true. I do too. I like to actually do the sculpting. Um, I like the drawing and the planning too, but of course, in certain ways, I like the sculpting better, um, but if I don't do this, I'm going to make bad decisions later when I'm looking at the sculpture in front, if I don't have a reference and I'm just kind of wing it and change things all the time, I'll make bad decisions about it. And also what I'm doing by doing this here is I'm creating visual problem solving. I'm creating something in front of myself. Yes, it's not in three dimensions, but I'm trying to show it in two different viewpoints. And by keeping on drawing on it, I'm realizing problems that I might have when I'm working in um, the clay. So it's helping me solve problems ahead of time to make sure I know what shape I want to make things so it's not just, oh, I'm winging it in my mind. But if I have the shape sorted out, then I'll have a memory of it when I'm actually going to sculpt it. My brain will have a, a physical, tangible, bodily motion memory to go with the clay. And that type of thing does make a difference, make it easier for me to sculpt. Nonetheless, either way, also, I'll have a better plan to look at. And so I won't, I'm not really wasting time to spend a little more time here. You think to yourself sometime, 
when you're early on in making art that oh why waste time with drawings I'll just get to it and I'll figure it out if I have problems I'll fix them yes that's can be true sometime it can work for you it'll work up to a certain point but after a certain point as, as you keep working with sculpture and things and design and art in general you'll realize that if you spend a little more time on the planning stage working through and trying things on the drawings that you'll be happier in the end because you'll have solved problems figured out shapes and really thought about what you're doing and you can enjoy the process doing this too and then some of you are like digital artists and you'll say well I don't care because I'm digital and you can undo everything well I'll say this that sometimes there's a like crutch people have using Photoshop, Illustrator, all that because you can undo things so easily. Working on paper has been proven to be better for your memory and your mind and is really the way to start even a digital project because it gives you a chance to have a tactility, not be able to immediately undo everything. You have to put the lines down and then put a new line down in its right spot which helps you actually sort things out and get things the way you want them to be. So I really recommend working on paper even if you're a digital artist for that reason, especially in the early stages. After that, of course, you don't need to. So I'm going to be done with this video and in a little bit I'm going to show you how I'm going to add some armatures to this, um, use this to create an armature with. Alright guys, take care.